What's good, YouTube? Let's get right into the video. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, gang. We trying to hit 2 million subscribers, y'all. Y'all want me up to 2 million subscribers? Let's get right into the video. How does a habitual liar secure a spot in a genre where realness is everything? Lil Tecca is an exception to the rule when it comes to how being exposed as a fraud can quite literally end your career. Given that he's openly admitted to lying in songs about topics like girls, guns, and fancy cars. I don't do like multiple girls you feel me like i'd rather just like one i don't have no straps for nobody i don't even Yo, all rappers lie in their music bro come on now bro why are you singling this nigga out bro every rapper lies if every rapper was telling the truth in their songs and they would all be in jail every rapper in america would be in fucking jail okay bro Drive. You'd expect that the hip hop community would give him the same treatment that they gave to rappers like CJ, Takashi69, or even Slim Jesus back in 2015. However, considering that his latest project outsold notable figures, nah, 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 they they did Slim Jesus wrong at that concert, bro. Holy which shit! Is Quavo and Lil Yachty, Lil Tecca clearly discovered a successful formula that his predecessors were unable to do. It's your boy Luesta, and today we're gonna be investigating how Lil Tecca became hip hop's most successful hypocrite. But before we get there, let's take a look at his come up. And as you'll see, he lived a life that was completely different than what he would eventually start to rap about. Born Tyler Justin Anthony Sharp in Queens, New York, Tekka may have been born in one of hip hop's hotspots, but eventually he moved to the comfort of Long Island by the seventh grade. As a result, he didn't make a name for himself rhyming in a cypher or on the street corner like many other New York rappers. Instead, much like other famous cap rap specialist YBN Namir, his first experience as a rapper came over a gaming headset. How'd you get into actually making music? It was on some Xbox shit. It was on. Bro, it's always Xbox, bro. It's always Xbox, my name. Look, every the, the biggest rappers originated from Xbox and PS3 and gaming consoles. All right, let's get that fucking straight, nigga. Let's get that straight, gang. Okay, okay, let's get that straight. Like roasting each other, and then I was like, I don't want to roast you on Xbox no more. I'm gonna roast you on SoundCloud. After that, he started spitting in real life and got himself taken to the principal's office in the process. After that, I um, started dissing people in school, and then my guidance counselor found out and then I deleted all the diss tracks. Although he was initially rapping just to poke fun at his friends, making diss tracks helped Tekka un- Wait, wait, yo, was this in 231? Because I went to school with this nigga, bro. I went to middle school with this nigga. Went to 231 cams. This nigga was in cams, bro. He was in cams. Understand the power of punchline and also the importance of exaggerating to get a response out of an audience. Nonetheless, Tekka knew that from the very moment he started rapping, that he wanted to make a living off it. I just felt like I had to go crazy. Like, I felt like I ain't, I, I ain't had no space to leave nothing on the table. Like, I had to take that opportunity. For real, for real. Despite the fact that he was barely a teenager, Tekka was laser focused on achieving his goals and just didn't realize how fast he would be ushered onto the world stage. As a young kid, I already knew what I wanted to do. So I was 14 feeling like all the people at the top are 20, whatever. In 10 years, I'm gonna be 24. They're gonna be 30 something out the door. I definitely didn't see it happening the exact way it happened. After steadily building a name for himself in Long Island, everything would change when he dropped a little track by the name of Ransom. Jorge has always put the ones he loves first, but when it comes to caring for his teeth, he's let his own maintenance take a back seat. Well, I got Y'all remember this? In a song where he expressed that shit took over the summer game. How he had twin glocks for his ops. This track catapulted Tekka to overnight stardom. However, it was lyrics like these that would also cause him some trouble down the road. But at first, nobody except himself believed that the song would actually become a hit. It was one of my favorite songs when I made it. As soon as I made it, I was telling everyone in the studio, this is this is the one. But everyone was saying did it again was the one that day. I'm saying rants. At just 16 years old, both of, them, bro, both of them just blew up, bro. He knew when he had a hit on his hands. And when Ransom dropped, it instantly put him on everyone's radar. After Cole Bennett took a chance on the unsigned artist, the track became the fourth most successful song in the history of the Lyrical Lemonade channel. Up there with the likes of Eminem and Juice Yeah, that's crazy. And as of June 2022, it has since garnered over a billion streams on Spotify as well. Even crazier, it peaked at number four on the charts, which took Tekka from being an absolute no 
nobody into a territory that even rappers who've been doing this for decades can only imagine. No one, including Tekka and his manager, expected it was going to blow up like that or even land him a record deal. A week after we dropped Ransom, I just got a random call. I was like, hello, is this? And I was like, this is Alex from Billboard magazine. I was calling to get information about Little Tekka because we have him charting here with Ransom. I think I found out in the morning and my mom told me. Had there been label interest? For a fact. A bidding war broke out and- That's crazy, bro. This nigga, I really remember going to school with this dude, bro. This nigga would be in the cafeteria, bro. Just silent. Nigga had no friends, bro, on some real introvert shit, bro. G shit, bro. I mean, I don't know if he had friends, but when I see him, bro, I just see this nigga at this fucking, at the cafeteria table, bro, just chilling type shit. Like. And just a really hectic 48, 72 hours. When the time was right, time. Suddenly, Tekka had the world's attention with his smooth flow and evident talent for melody. The only problem that he had was that as far as lyrical content went, there was nothing authentic about them. As rappers often do when they come out the gate, Lil Tekka insisted that his music was 100% him in an interview with DJ Booth saying, doing me is just how it should be. If it's not like that, then there's something wrong. However, it became clear that Tekka's interpretation of doing him was different from the typical definition in the rap game. Instead of rapping what his real life was like on Long Island, Tekka's attempt at doing him came from emulating the lyrical content of his influences. Chief Keef was like, it made rapping look cool to mm. me. Like it was like, it was so different. It was like the first of that type of shit. Like I don't give a fuck. We just doing this shit on the internet. Basically, Tekka was cosplaying as a thug in his bars while living a completely different lifestyle outside of the studio. Soon this would But isn't that what every rapper is doing, bro? Every rapper is doing that. None of these niggas are thugs, bro. Come on, bro. All these underground niggas are all putting on a fucking facade, a picture, bro. Bro, these, you got niggas talking about murdering niggas. Niggas ain't even catching bodies, bro. This is just rap, bro. Like, why even make a video on this nigga doing that when half the fucking YouTube, half the fucking SoundCloud rap population doing the same thing, bro? Don't make sense. Complicate the discussion about his position in hip hop and whether he even deserved a spot in the first place to the extent that he contemplated quitting before fully establishing himself. Thankfully, that never happened. And soon after, he did an interview on Genius's YouTube channel where Tekka would do something that would alter the entire trajectory of his career. However, unlike our videos on CJ and Slim Jesus, this interview seemed to do more good than it did bad. Taking one look at Tekka back then, complete with braces, glasses, and his general energy, it was probably easy to tell that he wasn't doing dirt in the streets, like he said in his lyrics. In fact, even as Ransom took off, this was one of the main criticisms that he faced when the video dropped on Lyrical Lemonade, such as this comment that got 30,000 likes saying, why Tekka look like an uncomfortable 13 year old who went to a party with his older brother and is scared to ask to leave. Most rappers, Lamborghinis and Grill, Lil Tekka, braces and golf carts. People always have their opinions, but people were first alerted to Tekka lying in a major way when he hopped on Genius to discuss Ransom in June of 2019. Now, most artists appear on Genius to give the deeper meaning behind their lyrics while simultaneously bro, hoping- Bro, if I was on Genius, bro, bro, you know what I'll be like? I'll be like, I don't give a fuck what you're asking me. You know what this, it means suck my dick. That's what it means. <laughs> on everything bro i just be trolling for real bro to reach a broader audience but for tekka he literally went on there to reveal that he never even held a firearm despite all the gun toting talk on his records um, i got two twin glocks turn you to a dancer i don't have no straps for nobody i don't got no straps this small but hilarious clip went viral leading to the interview becoming one of the most viewed videos on the genius channel Damn, that's crazy so when he returned to the platform to discuss his song did it again is it he went even is it really one of the most viewed videos on Genius? Let's see this for myself. Let's 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 take a let's do an investigation, my boy. Videos most popular. That is a lie. Oh, here's Tekka right here. Where's the Tekka interview? There should be another one. Here right here. That's not the most famous one. The, this is the most famous one. Damn, the Melly shit is the most famous one, gang. That's crazy. That's crazy. 
even further and completely revealed the truth to his audience in a way that's not often seen on Genius. I got a pack, hit him and do it again. Fucking up, fucking up, bro. I have a girlfriend. I don't have no young ladies. Don't DM me. Look at airline, took one again. Crashed Ferrari, so I had to dance. I don't even drive. I don't even know how to drive. That's dead. Talking about fashion and firearms yeah, that he never even touched. I hope you learn how to drive now. Because drive is important. You gotta know how to drive, bro. Tekka was unsurprisingly trolled for all the capping, with people struggling to believe just how blatant he was about it. As news of Tekka admitting his own lyrics were fake began to circulate, some fans started viewing him as a representation of what's wrong with rap. Hey, don't let that little Tekka shit convince y'all that it's cool to cap in your raps. The world needs more genuine shit. We got enough cap on the charts. Hip hop has just. Uh, I mean, rap supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a fun thing to do, you know. Um, like you don't really have to do everything you say in your rap. It's supposed to be fun, bro. Like people do it for fun, bro. Like y'all niggas be taking this shit too seriously. A lot of niggas don't even care, bro. Niggas don't even care, bro. What am I supposed to rap about? I was in my. I was in the room. I was in my room at 22 making YouTube videos. Huh? Ramen noodles in my plate. No, I don't know, bro. Nigga, niggas ain't bro. Niggas gonna be rapping about. I got some chains on my neck. Yeah, nigga. Suck my fucking dick. And it's, oh my gosh, nigga. You know what I'm saying, bro? This turned into who can cap the most. Lil Tekka was talking about driving foreign cars when he ain't even have a license. But in Tekka's defense, he wasn't just doing this one minute, then backtracking the next to try and save face. Instead, he leaned into it and tried to make his audience feel stupid for being bothered by what he was doing. Having a gun don't make anyone gangster. So rapping about guns. Don't make you wanna be gangster. You just rapping about guns. Like I rap about bitches. Nigga have a nigga, bro. Nigga, a nigga has like niggas 